and 30 years ago. Hey, hey, excuse me, shall I tell her? I'm in the middle of a speech and I am currently Abraham Lincoln, Green Bear. Oh, 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 I think she's trying to finish a speech. Yeah, but everybody knows I'm the one who's gonna be the future president and I have a very important question that cannot wait. <sighs> All right, go ahead and take off my hat <coughs> and, and the beard. Thank you. You are welcome. All right, Green Bear. Oh, hey, kid. We got a question here, so sorry about that. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, but it's super, super important. Oh, okay. All right, it better be important. You interrupted storyteller. Okay, so do you think that if Abraham Lincoln were around today... Yes? ...that he would be a kid time story timer? Actually, that's a great question. Oh yeah, I like that. Because if he loved books, you would think that he would love kid time story time. Well, I think in my learned opinion. Yes, yes. That Abraham Lincoln would most definitely be a kid time story timer. Yes, yes. So see, we are following in Abraham Lincoln's footsteps. Yes, which is perfect for a presidential person like myself. Because as you know, I'm going to be president of the United States one day. Yes, and I'm going to vote for him and I'm going to be the best friend. First best friend. Yeah, of course you're going to be my first best friend. You've always been my first best friend. Okay, you may now read because I want to know more about Abe Lincoln. The boy who loved books. Just like us, we have a lot in common. Oh, I know. Oh yeah, we all have a lot in common with Abraham Lincoln. We love books, we love big words, and Abraham Lincoln is the 16th president of the United States, and he's famous for his way with words. Big, beautiful words, incredible speeches that people still quote to this day. But it all began, his way with words, with his love of books. That's right. That's where he learned about the power of words, how they shaped what they could say, well, how they could change the world. Let's see how his love of books was born, because let me tell you something. Where he was born, there was no library. In the wilds of Kentucky, 1809, a boy was born. Looks cold, doesn't it? His mother called him Abraham. His last name, Lincoln. His bed was made from corn husks. His covers, skins from... Okay, I'm not gonna say that. His cabin built with logs from towering trees, from the trees right around him, see that? Now, Abe said his first words in that one room cabin. That's right, the entire house was in one room. In that one room cabin, he took his first steps on a hard dirt floor. When they say the words, someone is dirt poor, this is where it comes from. Dirt floors, dirt poor. A wood fire chased the cold and cooked corn pone. The door swung open, open, shut on leather hinges. Leather hinges, I didn't even know you could make hinges from leather. A tiny window looked out onto his world. When he was two, his po folks packed up their few goods and moved Abe and his sister Sarah to Knob Creek. Now we're still in Indiana. The Cumberland Trail ran close to their new cabin, which meant that Abe saw peddlers. Peddlers is the old timey word for salesmen. Pioneers, politicians, traders, slaves passed by. As Abe grew, he talked to all these travelers, heard where they'd been, where they were going. He saw their world was wider than his own, and his ideas stretched, his questions rose, his dreams were stirred. Because these travelers from other places, they were giving him a window into another world, one that he wanted to go see for himself. At school, he worked with numbers, one to 10. He shaped his letters, A to Z, with a charcoal stick. That's what they used back then. Not pencils, not pens, not markers. Crayons hadn't been invented yet, and they didn't even have paper. What? I know, crazy, right? So crazy. So he used that little, like, that little chalkboard thing? Yep, little slate. That's what he'd write on. Wow, that's kind of wild to think about. Mm hmm no libraries, no paper, no crayons. But he did have what he needed, the basics. So the letters A to Z, he wrote them down, day in and day out, in school, at home, in dust, in snow, on logs of wood. The letters cast a magic spell. He loved to learn, and I love to hear that. 
His parents, well, they had no schooling, but when the day was done, his family sat around the fire and his mom shared the Bible stories that she knew by heart. His father spun yarns. Spun yarns is an old timey way of saying that he told stories, uh, told jokes, made them laugh. See, this was pre-television, pre-radio, pre-internet. We had to gather around together as a family around the fire and entertain each other. When Abe was seven, his family moved again. The Lincoln set out one December morning. Oh, so hard to move in the cold. Their bits and pieces piled onto two stout horses. Can you imagine moving all your stuff, all your stuff? Think about your clothes, your toys, all your things on two horses and your parents' stuff? No, why didn't they just call the movers? Movers did not exist back then. Well, maybe they could have rented a van. Cars were not even invented yet. Oh man, these were crazy times. No paper, no moving vans, no cars, no radio, no YouTube. Mm-hmm, it was tougher back then to be a kid. Wow. They walked and they rode hundreds of miles to Indiana. They crossed the Ohio River. Oh, before they were in Kentucky, that's what it was. They started in Kentucky, then they moved to Indiana, but they're not done moving yet. We're only at the beginning of the story. They crossed the river on a makeshift ferry. Is that a nail biter or what? And then Abe helped his father hack a trail through the forest, thick with trees and tangled vines, until at last they came to land they claimed. And grown-ups think the real estate market is hard now? Look at how hard it was back then to find your little piece of land. No cabin waited at Little Pigeon Creek, mm-mm. Instead, a half-faced camp, this thing right here, of branches, twigs, and logs was where they had to stay, and one side was open wide to the wilderness. The family kept the wood piles stacked. The blazing fire scared off the wild animals that roamed the woods. No, no, bears, bears are good. I can't believe these bears would scare them. Well, they were not green bears. They were not red bears. They were not pink bears. They were not your kind of bear, green bear. Okay, good, because I totally would have snowed them for warmth because I'm a good bear. You are a good bear. The bears, these bears, not our good bears, these wild bears growled. The wolves howled. The panthers screamed like this, ah! Abe shivered. Dark was a fearsome time. He was shivering in the cold and the fear he really could use a green bear to snuggle up with. Then settlers came to help, ah, oh, help from the community. Thank goodness, the family, they raised a home. Now Abe and Sarah, his sister, had a loft to call their own. And Abe loved to climb up to a sleeping place. But, but, you see these holes right here? You see the wind? Ah, oh, the snow and the wind blew through the cracks in the cabin. Ooh cold just thinking about it and and the outside crept indoors and icing the walls just once one time Abe shot a turkey in the woods but not again look at that he was forlorn it's a big fancy word that means super sad he did not like the hunting he vowed he would not take the breath from living things now, when Abe was eight, he helped his father clear the land. He learned to swing an ax and fell the trees. Timber! <laughs> but he longed to learn from books, go back to school. In all this traveling and moving and shivering and home raising, we have not seen a library, have we? We haven't had a moment to read a book or go to school. How would he feed his love of books with all this stuff going on? When Abe turned nine, dark days fell upon him. Milk sickness took his mother to her grave. Abe whittled pegs to put in her pine coffin, his grief so deep he could not speak her name. That was something that would affect him for the rest of his life. Oh, no, storyteller, this is so sad. I know, this was extremely sad. There's no way around that. This was 
a really big blow for the kid. Uh, and, and what is milk sickness? Can I get sick from milk? No, 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 Doug the Dinosaur. That is an old illness that no longer is around. How did it happen? Well, it used to be, Doug, that occasionally cows would eat a weed that was poisonous to them, this vine. Yeah. And the settlers didn't know this, so a lot of settlers crossing the Midwest would drink the milk from these cows, and it had been basically poisoned. Oh, no, so the milk that his mom drank was poisoned? Yeah, um, and, but nobody knew that, that the cows were eating this thing that poisoned their milk. But once they figured this out many years later, then the poisoning stopped. Exactly, so now you can drink milk, nothing to worry about. Okay, but I'm still sad about him losing his mom. I know, those are the things that really shape your life, these intensely sad things that happen to, to people at any age. It's rough. When you're a kid, it's rough. A year limped by. Limped because it was sad. He's just dragging along. His father went to find a wife, and he brought back this lady, a widow who had three kids, and her heart was so wide, she took an Abe and Sarah as her kin. Kin is family. So she loved them, and Abe actually ended up loving his stepmother very much because you know what she did? She encouraged his love of books. She owned books, and she let Abe read when the chores were done. Once more, their house of logs became a home again. There they are, once again, gathered around the fire as a family, and there's Abraham Lincoln feeding his love. She sent the children back to school. So you know that made him super happy because he missed school. Abe wore two shorter buckskins and a raccoon cap because he was so tall, he probably kept outgrowing all his clothes, right? He drew his letters with a turkey buzzard quill, a feather. Abraham Lincoln, his hand and pen, he will be good, but God knows when. He actually wrote that. He learned to add, subtract on planks of wood, but most of all, he loved to read. When spelling bees, spin yarns, old fashioned way of saying telling stories, telling stories. When school was shut, Abe hired out to farmers. His father, though, kept the money that he made for the family. Abe split rails, dug wells, chopped trees. In fact, one of his nicknames became the Old Rail Splitter. That's not in this book, but I have read a lot about Abraham Lincoln because I'm so interested in him. So that actually became a nickname from childhood that stuck for life. They even used it on the campaign trail when he would run for president a long time later. But all the while he worked, he yearned to learn. To anyone who'd listen, he liked to say, the things I want to know are in books. That's a real quote. Once, rain leaked through the cabin roof and soaked a book that he'd borrowed. And for three hot days, Abe pulled stalks of corn in his friend's field to pay him back for the lost book. But look at that. He's reading here. He, the book is at, in, his, in his back pocket right there. He's reading here. Timber! He's reading right there. When Abe plowed, a book always sat in his back pocket. At each row's end, he'd take it out and read. His horse, meh, would wait for him to turn the page. The neighbors all shook their heads and called him lazy. <laughs> they didn't know that he was not being lazy. He was vigorously chasing the ideas in his mind and in the books. They didn't understand his bookish boys and this bookish boy and his bookish ways. Abe knew he had to move on out of the wilderness. Splitting rails and plowing land was not his dream. At 19, he pulled a flatboat down the river, saw people and places beyond backwoods, saw black men and women and their children bound in chains. A sign above their heads read, auction block, a life for sale, like hatchet, ax, or plow. Abe knew it was unjust to own another. New Salem, Illinois was where Abe settled. Ah, now we're in Illinois, which to this day is known as the Land of Lincoln. That's the nickname still to this day. A hundred folk or more lived in this place. He hired on to run the general store and folks like to tell the story that once he overcharged someone six cents, but honest Abe walked miles to give it back. Again, another nickname that lasted for life. Honest Abe, the old rail splitter, Land of Lincoln. 
Even here, A was asked to prove his worth with brawn, not brains. Brawn is the uh uh. Brains is the mm mm. The owner of Abe's store set up a wrestling match against the leader of a wild and rowdy gang. Abe took Jack Armstrong on. Some said that Abe pinned Jack to the floor. Others swore Armstrong beat Abe with a trick. But when Jack saw Abe's strength, he shook his hand and they became close friends in years to come. By firelight, he studied law without a teacher. Did you hear that? Without a teacher. But don't you need teachers to learn everything? Teachers help us learn a lot of things, but, but, <laughs> you can be your own teacher. What? That's what books are. They are, they are our teachers. I never thought about it that way. So basically I can like teach myself and the teacher can teach me too? You can do both things. Oh, wow, I'm really learning a lot. I gotta learn, I gotta read a lot. You have to tell me everything you read. Okay, I'll tell you in a little bit. So, by firelight, here he is reading the books by candlelight. Soon, he became a lawyer in the courts. Abe saw that words could free or jail a man. He found that words could change the way folks thought. He realized words could change the world. For example, oh yes, use a giraffe. I learned that word can woo a lady love. Well, that's true. And words can create art, music, great theater that then I could star in. Oh, that's also true, Olivia the Ostrich. <laughs> and words can also get you an extra hot cheesy slice of pizza at your favorite New York deli. <laughs> yes, that's a different kind of use of words, but yes, I suppose Everybody could use words to their benefit. So when politics began to call his name, Abe aimed his words at wrongs he'd like to write. Friends said that he should run for public office. He tried for Congress, then the Senate, and at last he ran for the highest office in the land. Ba -ba 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 -ba! Abe Lincoln for president! That's right, there he is on the back of a train, campaigning, because this is how they did back then. Because again, no internet, no television, no cars. So this was the way to see as many people as fast as possible on a train. Abraham Lincoln, born in a log cabin, child of the frontier, head in a book, elected our 16th president from the wilderness to the White House. He learned the power of words and used them well. I love the story so much. I hope you hung in with me because I know this isn't a typical kind of wacky story, but it's a true story. And it's an important story because he learned even as a kid, no older than you, how important books were and how they helped him see the world and be able to change the world in a way that he saw was fairer and better for everyone. Oh, storyteller, I really enjoyed that story. Yes, Olivia the Ostrich, oh yes. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln loved to read Shakespeare? What, he read Shakespeare? Oh yes, oh yes he did, and he read poetry and histories, he read the Bible, he read uh, the biography of George Washington. Oh, that's really smart because basically he was like learning how to be president from George. That was the first president. Oh, I've heard. What else did he read? Oh, he read things like Aesop's Fables, which are still around. Oh, those are famous for teaching morals uh, of stories. What else? What else? Oh, okay. Uh, Robinson Crusoe, Big Adventure Story, uh, newspapers to stay current on things of the day, and uh, oh. He loved funny stories. Oh, oh, this is so cool. Oh, I'm gonna have to create a big reading list. Maybe you can help me pick out some Shakespeare books that, that, that I can read so I can be like Abraham Lincoln. Olivia the Ostrich, please. Olivia, you have quite the collection. Oh yes, uh, come over, take a look at what I've got. I'm sure something will help you be more presidential. Okay, I'm gonna go. Oh, it's this way. Okay, you too. All right, so obviously everybody learned the power of words here and Abe Lincoln has some things that he said that were so incredible that to this day, you still hear his quotes all the time and you may not even know that they're his quotes. <laughs> For example. Oh, you have one white rat? Yeah, my favorite quote is, you can fool all the people some of the time. You can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Oh, that's actually 
a real Abraham Lincoln quote. And also, I'll take it with extra cheese. <laughs> okay, that was not actually a real quote. Oh, oh I, I have a favorite Abraham Lincoln quote. Oh, what is it, Doug? It is, do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? That's a really good quote and a really good Doug the Dinosaur quote. Yeah, yeah, because it, he, he, he took all the people who did not like him and then he made them his friends and it worked really well and he said that he was a better president for having them around him and their ideas. Oh, that was wise, very wise. Ooh la la, I also have a favorite quote. Oh, Gilles the Giraffe, you too? Yes, 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 oui, oui. Uh, it is a government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from this earth. Ooh la la. Okay, that ooh la la part was not part of it, but the rest was. So kid, I just hope that you are feeling as inspired as I was by Abraham Lincoln to read, to learn, to be your own teacher so that you can harness the power of words and go out there and do great things. <laughs> <laughs>